Hi guys, it's Lisa from ToCreateAWebsite.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create includes for your pages. Now, includes are very handy. What they allow you to do is call up common areas of your site from one file. So you only have to update that one file if you want to change that section of your site. So let's say you have a site that's 60 pages long or 60 pages deep and you want the header and the left nav to be the same on every page. Well rather than opening up all 60 pages every time you want to make a change to your left nav or your header, you simply open up one file, make the change, save it, and instantly every page on your site will be updated. That, that's the power of server-side includes and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So getting started, as you can see, I'm using Dreamweaver. You don't have to use Dreamweaver. You can use a, a text editor, notepad, BB edit, whatever works for you. But I like to use Dreamweaver for my videos just, to so, just so people will, will have more of a visual. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm assuming you've done is you already got your web page pretty much done or you, you've got it done to a point where you can at least start setting up your includes. Um, this video assumes that you have a basic understanding of SH, of, excuse me, of H HTML, and um, maybe even a little bit of CSS, uh, but definitely HTML. So what I'm going to do is, um, okay, for this video, as you can see, this is the site. You got the header up here, got the left nav right here, and then here's your body. Well, the left nav is the area that we're going to want to include. In other words, we want to call this section up from for every page. That way we don't have to edit every single page when we want to make a change to one of these links. So the first thing that you're going to do is go into your code, locate the left navigation code. Now for my example, my left nav is, it starts here, I'm using CSS, it starts here at this div and it ends down here. This is the code that makes up this blue area right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and cut that code. And I'm going to open up a brand new page, blank page. I'm going to wipe out all the meta tags because with includes you do not need to put any additional meta tags or anything into the include file. You only want the code that you want the browser to call up. So in this case now I'm just going to paste the code I just cut into this blank file. Here's my left nav code. I'm going to tell the browser to call up this code. So what I'm going to do is say file save as. I like to put my includes in their own folder. So I'm going to put it in a folder called includes and I'm going to name it navigation. You can call it left nav, whatever you want to call it. Navigation.html. Okay, and then you go ahead and save it and then publish this file to the web. Okay? Now we got to go back to our index page because remember we just cut that area out of our index page. So now the browser is going to need to call up that file so it will display your left nav. So what you have to do is grab this code here. Include virtual equals and here's the path to my include file. So I'm going to copy this code here and I'm going to paste it right where I cut out that left nav code. So as you can see, this small snippet of code right here is all you need to call up that left navigation file. So now, anytime, and so what you would do is you would put this code in all 60 of your pages where the left nav is supposed to go. So anytime you want to make a change to your left nav, rather than opening all 60 pages, you go and open this file that's saved in the includes folder called navigation.html and you can do the same procedure for every section of your site that you want included. You do this for your header, you do this for your footer, if you have a right navigation you do the same thing. Now notice that um, the name of this file is .html, the extension of it is, is .html and the extension of my home page is .html. Now for includes, generally web hosts require you to end your include files in .shtml but you don't have to. Let's say you've already got a site, you've already got you know search engine traffic and you don't want to change your extensions because you'll lose your search engine rankings, people's bookmarks would break and whatnot and you don't want to have duplicate content out there. So what you can do 
is go to your web host control panel or FTP up to your web host and you may have to ask your host if you need help with this but you have to find your .ht access file it's a little text file that lives in the root of your server open up your .ht access, access file and add this line of code just a blank line enter down to a blank line and add this line of code to your .ht access file. What this does, it tells your browser to treat or tells the web host to treat .shtml or, or excuse me, it teaches the browser to teach to treat HTML as .shtml so your includes will work without you having to go in and rename all your pages to .shtml okay so again go to your host if you have you might have to FTP up to your server look in the root of your folder on the server it should be in the same location as your index.html page and open up that .ht access file paste this line of code in a bl into a blank line save it and republish your .ht access file and this will allow your includes to work if you don't do this your includes will not work unless you name all of your pages .shtml and I'm assuming most of you probably do not use .shtml and you want to keep all of your extensions the same you don't want to have to start changing your file names because your pages are already live so that's pretty much all you need to do um, includes are a wonderful thing and I guarantee that once you start using them you are not going to ever want to create a site without using them again I mean they are so handy and the larger that your site is the more beneficial the includes are so enjoy have fun and I will see you in the next video